Kia ora koutou everybody, uh, I'm Robbie Taylor, and this is my colleague um, JC Summers and we're here to talk to you about um, a re recent issues paper that we've just released on private innovation and money. So this issues paper lays out our thinking around issues that are emerging in private innovation and money in New Zealand and we want your feedback on opportunities and risks, how this new emerging area might impact our objectives as the Reserve Bank and Steward of Money and what regulatory response is best suited to ensure that the opportunities and risks posed by this innovation are, um, are dealt with appropriately. So first of all we just wanted to talk a little bit about um, this frame I suppose what we're talking about in this context. So this is the money tree that helps us describe money. On the left hand you have uh, digital money, the left hand side you have digital money, on the right hand side you have physical money. Digital money is uh, the money that most people will use um, day to day but, but, but banknotes and coins in the form of cash continue to be a really important form of money in New Zealand. The other distinction that this, this graph makes is between private money and public money or central bank money. So central bank money, which is the right hand side, is the money issued by us in the central bank. It's banked, backed by the state and, our, and, and the government. On the left hand side we have private money. So private money is not issued by the central bank, it's not backed by us, it's backed by the issuer of that money. And that distinction is really important. For people to understand. In our consultation today we're talking about money on, on, on the left hand side of this tree, that's private money, and we're talking about new forms of money that are being issued, so private innovation and in money. This could be crypto, uh, which is generally token based or issued via distributed ledger technology reflected in, in, in the third tier of that diagram, but it also could be um, conventional payment technology account based, but issued in a new form with a new business model uh, that provides um, innovation in that way. So as stewards of money, um, the Reserve Bank's objectives um, is to ensure that New Zealand has a reliable and efficient money and payment system that supports innovation and inclusion. And one of the most talked about innovation in the past couple of years um, has been crypto assets. And some of the crypto assets claim to provide an alternative to conventional money issued by states or by banks. And this is a challenge in how people think about money that we use in day-to-day -day context, and it is the role of a reserve bank to respond to these emerging developments. So we want to think about, well, for example, um, what additional regulatory powers um, we might need to um, appropriate balance these new risks as well as opportunities. Now, to help you navigate this issues paper, um, we have laid out the structure of the paper at the start. And um, in total, we have seven sections and with quite a few appendices with background information that will help you understand the issues. And we have also included a glossary um, which explains um, some of the terms that people might not be too familiar with. Um, among these terms, a couple of key ones are well, central bank money, um, as I mentioned before, is issued by the central bank, unlike private money issued by banks all um, new types of private money issued by other entities. And um, things like crypto assets, um, which are digital tokens um, that can be traded, stored and exchanged um, without needing to go through a traditional payment infrastructure. Or um, stablecoin, which is a type of um, crypto asset that tries to maintain its value relative to conventional money, like fiat currencies or bank money. And um, another couple of terms are monetary sovereignty, which is really important. Um, as a small nation, we nevertheless want to have autonomy in what um, we want um, our money to do um, for New Zealand as a whole. And um, this is a part of the um, Reserve Bank's role as a steward to ensure that um, we deliver on um, maintaining our monetary sovereignty as well as other public policy objectives. Now the core drivers of our work uh, are really around um, you know, some, th some things that some of you might understand. There are some concerns with existing inefficiencies in private money. You know, some people talk to us about the efficiencies they face uh, in, in managing their bank account and, um, and, and, and the different payment systems that exist in New Zealand. There are also a number of perceived benefits uh, that new forms of money might issue and this could include things um, like uh, their suitability, their, the, the, the perceived suitability 
uh, in a new, more digital uh, economy of the future. There's also claims that, that crypto assets um, present that they are money and the likelihood that in the future that some people might use them as the, in this way. Um, of course, uh, there's the risks that central bank money um, or that markets uh, might emerge that don't have central bank money uh, or other safeguards anchoring that money uh, into the economy. The declining use of cash is a really important driver for us uh, when we think about the options that exist to people and how they may, um, if central bank, if cash isn't available, they're forced to use other forms of money that might not meet their needs. And of course, um, we're concerned about the potential impact on central bank money as the value anchor in, uh, of New Zealand's financial system and the impacts of that on monetary sovereignty. So we have a few priors as we start this, start this work, some assumptions that, that guide us. First of all, um, competition is really important. Competition is about supporting innovation and improving the systems we have. Choice is another critical underpinning of our work. When we think about the monetary system of the future, we see a system that has uh, central bank money, cash, maybe a central bank digital currency as well in the future, and private, multiple forms of private money um, circulating and available. But it's really important that those choices uh, are meaningful ones. People actually can choose uh, to use different forms of money because that supports market discipline and inclusion. It's really important that new forms of money uh, are trusted. Trust must be, must be very high with these forms of money. People must be able to trust them in the way they tr can trust central bank money and can trust money in their bank account. And of course, uh, in a regulatory sense, we think it's really important that the same risk, same regulation principle applies. Now we're looking at whatever we're looking at whatever could be used as money, but primarily our interest is in significant forms of private money. This is because those are the sorts of things that really impact um, everyday New Zealanders. In New Zealand, crypto assets, um, the uptake of those is not very high. Uh, and, and, very, and very, very low in terms of um, the use uh, in a monetary sense to buy and sell things. But, but many New Zealanders have started to use them um, as, a, as a sort of investment or a speculative asset, uh, particularly over the last couple, couple of years. And crypto assets um, have a range of risks compared to conventional money that really need to be managed alongside the opportunities they might present. Private innovation also has implications for other regulatory regimes in the financial sector and beyond and we're really mindful uh, that our interest as a central bank is not the only interest uh, in this area and other regulators might, might have an interest too. Now back to private innovation. Um, it's useful to start by looking at um, the role banks have um, in our money and payment system um, tying together businesses of money and payments and banking. Um, which provides us with the money we know today. So banks are trusted, they are regulated, and they are resilient. And these are important um, to underpin the confidence in the New Zealand dollar. Um, and we don't want to lose these benefits um, with new forms of money. However, um, we do see some opportunities um, to improve on our current system. Um, new forms of money can provide more efficient and lower cost means of payment and they might meet niche needs that are not well served by the banks. And um, we want to see if regulations can help support trust in these new forms of money and uh, make sure they are safe for consumers and meet their needs. Um, with more competition and a more open ecosystem, we think that this is good for competition and it's good for inclusion and ultimately it benefits all New Zealanders. We see a number of risks for um, holders and users and this goes beyond just financial risks. Um, there are anti-money laundering concerns, there are cyber risks and so on. Um, however, um, as a form of money, we're particularly concerned about um, lack of value stability, um, the difficulties in terms of redeeming them um, for the underlying assets or other forms of money and um, the strengths of the entities that's backing the new forms of private money. And, and we also see that um, new forms of money can pose risks to the money and payment systems as a whole. 
and these include competition risks um, posed by um, large entities that could have significant market power um, and to have the ability to issue money will add significantly um, to their market dominance and that could lead to some undesirable outcomes. We're also concerned about this trust across the monetary system. The new forms of money, if we allow them to, to proliferate without any controls, um, that might run the risk of fracturing our current monetary system and um, that could lose um, the important benefit the money infrastructure bring to the whole economy. And of course, we care about monetary sovereignty. We do see the significant adoption of um, non-New Zealand dollar denominated forms of money could impact on um, our ability to implement independent monetary policy. And this could have um, further implications for the whole economy. Um, while the risk is um, not immediate, um, we think that as a nation, that we want to have a high level of certainty that we do have monetary sovereignty. Now, our proposal is to move forward uh, in two ways. First of all, we have a uh, obligation under the Reserve Bank Act to monitor private innovation and money. And so we're developing a monitoring framework to make sure we understand how this new, these new forms of money are emerging and being used and are in a position where we could take action if necessary. And the second area is to consider the role of regulation. And it's in this area um, that we really need feedback from you. We want to understand your perspectives on how regulation can be targeted to ensure that balance between risk and opportunity is achieved in an appropriate way. We do encourage you to read through our issues paper and to email us your thoughts on the private innovation issues that matter to you by 3 April 2023. Thank you for your interests and for your time. Your feedback will help shape the future of money. Timoni Animata, here in Aotearoa. Kia ora. <laughs>